Hello, I'm Yonan Latu at the South China Morning Post. One of my favorite uncles fell to his death after he had scaled Mount Everest and was on his way down from the world's highest peak in May 1993. He was 41, physically in top form, fully trained and raring to go, having joined an expedition to mark the 40th anniversary of the historic first ascent of the mountain by his own uncle, the more famous Tenzing Norgay. We were in disbelief that a veteran climber of his caliber could be cut down so cruelly in his prime, coming from a family of pioneering mountaineers who made their name slogging up and down those same wretched slopes that are swarming with hundreds of people at a time these days. My father had climbed Everest a decade before that, and my mother's brother was the first man in the world to scale it twice, long before people started doing it multiple times. In fact, I've lost track of the number of cousins, in-laws, and close and distant relatives who have achieved the same feat. But my beloved uncle's death all those years ago is the kind of tragedy that happens all the time on Everest. Climbers give everything they have to make it to the top and die needlessly on the way down, be it from exhaustion and exposure, underestimating what it takes to make it back to camp, running out of oxygen midway, or a sudden turn in the weather which can be as treacherous as it is unpredictable. All that may go with the territory, but the fatality is being reported on Everest this season. At least 11 so far are particularly concerning in the context of the human traffic jams in the aptly named death zone at a dizzying altitude of more than 8,000 meters. The pictures that climbers are sending back are jaw-droppingly astonishing and alarming, with hundreds of them lining up like fans at a Lady Gaga show. Except that up there, they are risking their lives, perched precariously along the ridge that forms the final approach to the summit, waiting for their turn to clamber up or scramble down while attached to a single fixed rope. The overcrowding is taking a deadly toll, as in the case of one young Indian climber who succumbed to exhaustion and exposure while on the way down because he was stuck in that line for over 12 hours. Experienced climbers will tell you this is a disaster waiting to happen because the last thing you want to do is linger for hours in the death zone. If you care about self-preservation, you'll want to get the hell out of there as quickly as possible because all it takes is for that small window of clear weather to close and one of those notorious jet streams to blow in and it's game over. It doesn't help that many of those flocking to Everest every year are rank amateurs who are neither physically nor mentally prepared for the rigors of the most hostile environment on the planet. They're completely dependent on their Sherpa guides to push, pull, drag, or carry them up to the top and back. People who don't know a crampon from a tampon, was how one veteran mountaineer put it. It's all about ego tourism, to be able to come back with that all-important selfie from the top for social media recognition, never mind how you got it. We've reached a stage where it's time to stop and reevaluate whether climbing Everest is even worth it anymore. Hundreds do it every year. Thousands have done it already. And one Sherpa set a record this month with his 24th ascent. Yes, you heard right, two dozen times. And two of his peers have retired after reaching the top 21 times each. What's left to do? Every record has been set already, whether you're the oldest, youngest, fastest, blind, a double amputee, a diabetic, or a cancer patient. Just about everyone has been there, done that, has t-shirt. Keeping that in mind and without belittling the achievements of those who have put blood, sweat and tears into it, surely the time has come to ask whether climbing Everest is anything to boast of anymore. Or if anyone even cares these days. Ask the first Hong Kong woman to conquer Everest. All she got when she returned home two years ago was flack for not helping a dying climber on her way down. I'm deliberately leaving out her name here because, let's be honest, most of you won't remember it, if you even heard of it. Still want to climb Everest because it's there? Well, it's not there for you. Leave it alone.